the congregation should please stand and face the west door. Page three of the pamphlet. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister, Frances Uluafumilayo, for burial. Let us pray with confidence to God, the giver of life, that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. Deliver your handmaid, Frances Uluafumilayo, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. I have set God always before me, for he is on my right hand, therefore I shall not fall. For why? Thou shalt not leave my soul in hell, neither shalt thou suffer thy only one to see corruption. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. I am the resurrection and the life, seeth the Lord. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. They shall hunger no more, neither shall they thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Let not your hearts be troubled, you believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and not as a stranger. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor past, nor height, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted.
Since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so will it be for those who have died in him. God will bring them to life with Jesus. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us continue in prayer. O God, the maker and the redeemer of all mankind, grant us with your handmaid, Frances, Oluwa Fumilayo Abisola, and all the faithful departed, the sure benefits of your son's saving passion and glorious resurrection, that on the last day, when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Please sit back for the reading. The reading is taken from the New Testament, Revelations, chapter 7, from verse 9 to 17. After this, I behold, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, Who are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white with the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that seated on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Rest eternal grant our Lord and let light perpetual shine upon her. 
shall be in the everlasting remembrance. She shall not be afraid of any evil tidings. Absolve, O Lord, the soul of thy handmaid, Frances Oluwafumlayo Abiola, from all the chains of our sins. That thy succor by grace she might be found worthy to escape the avenging judgment. Enjoy the bliss of everlasting life. The Lord be with you. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to Christ our Savior. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. This is the gospel of Christ. I speak in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. 
In Christ's name, I want to welcome all of us to this service of farewell for our beloved sister, Dr. Mrs. Frances Olufumilayo Ajose, who has gone to be with the Lord at this time. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will comfort us and console us. I want to register uh, condolences to the family, particularly the children, home and abroad. This is a trying time for you. I pray that God Almighty, who is the Father of all, will support you through life and you will never be stranded in the mighty name of Jesus. In starting this homily, I like to read from the tribute sent in by the Cathedral Medical Society. Just a paragraph from that tribute. The Medical Society not only mourns but celebrates you you are an achiever, versatile as you are brilliant. Medicine in Nigeria has lost a gem. Medicine in Nigeria has lost a gem. This is a testimony to the life and time of our beloved sister. And this testimony will serve as a springboard for what I will be sharing with us for the next few minutes. And I've entitled this homily Activity. Simply, Activity. If we want to define the word activity, it is the quality or state of being active. The exertion of vigorous and energetic action. If we look into it further, we can call activity liveliness and by which we mean being responsive and responsible. Liveliness. Being responsive and responsible. This unique word, activity, as as its antonyms, words like idleness, laziness, indolence, or inactivity. And these are words that we don't like to hear because the Bible and the societal norms detect them passionately. As humans, we engage in activities, be it business activity, academic, social, family, physical, spiritual activities. And this is because God created us as activity-driven beings. And right from the beginning, from the start of creation, God introduced us to liveliness, that is to being active. He put man in that beautiful garden to work, to do something, to be active, not to be redundant, not to just sit there and enjoy and sleep. The activities that we involved ourselves with would normally lead to achievements 
be it little or big. You will get to know what I'm trying to get to. If I am asked to describe the life and times of Dr. Mrs. Frances Olufumilayo, I just said, whose remains lie in this casket, I will be quick to answer that it was a lively life. She lived responsively to the purpose of her existence and she was responsible in her calling till the very end. Her sister charted a course for her life right early in life and became an active force everywhere she went. From her elementary school to the secondary and on to the College of Medicine, first as a trainee, then as a trainer, and as a consultant, she distinguished herself all the way through her positive activities. Manifest, she recorded in her chosen profession, a worthy attestation to her exemplary life and achievements. She was first to point out the allergy potential of paracetamol, first to document the presence of bichet disease in Africa, first to identify the important role of pH of skin cleansing agents for the treatment of eczema, first to draw attention to the rich therapeutic potential of several African plants. She served as a member of the first national TB leprosy control program, still first. She served as a member of the first national AIDS control program, just to mention a few. First, 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 just because of our activities. Dr. Mrs. Ajose lived actively, not only in the secular setting. As she was active in her field, so she was in the body of Christ. She benefited the church with her medical expertise. In a setting where many are too busy to volunteer to serve, when you call upon people, we need you to do this for us. Hey, no, I'm busy. I don't have the time. Oh, I don't want the trouble. She threw herself into the service of the Almighty God. She served as a Dalsizan lay reader and a member of the Cathedral Medical Society, which she led till her passing. And many other societies, both in Lagos and in Ijebuode, our hometown. An active and impactful life it was in the service of humanity and God. I want to pray on this occasion that God Almighty will grant our soul eternal rest. She will rise in glory at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, Apostle Paul writes, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. What Paul is saying here is that as humans, as creations of God, we all have roles and responsibilities to God's world, particularly we believers. We are not to be here to be lazy. We are not to be here and be indolent. 
Because our God is an active God. He's actively involved in the day-to-day -day running of the world. And from eternity past, he has been active and he has been on a mission. Through his son Jesus Christ, he invited us to join his pre-existing outreach, which is the redeeming and reconciling activities motivated by his loving will for the entire world. John 3.16 For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, eh, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have what? Eternal life. That is the mission of God. And he has invited us to partner with him to participate in God's activity is to participate in the movement of God's love towards people around us in our little corners. That is what Dr. Mrs. Frances Ajose did. She caught that vision. She didn't say, okay, I will just practice messing. I will enjoy the money and I will enjoy myself not minding what happens to others. She studied medicine and she partnered with God to improve our society, to improve the church, to touch lives. It is, however, disheartening that many in our society today have not come to this understanding. And that is why you see so much selfishness, greed, avarice. All they know, pursue, and preoccupy themselves with are the mundane activities of this world that lack eternal value. They want to have they want to amass wealth. I've been reading from the dailies. Use the money for palliative, judiciously. Don't divert it. Don't di Do we need to talk about that? When something has been released to improve the society and you still see some people, they want to cut corners. They don't know, they don't care. If they want to die, let them die. If they want to perish, let them perish. Just because of what is in it for them. You see them exerting force where they will get something for self-gratification. Some, you see them when they are discussing how to bring someone down. That is where you see them active. When you are talking about something good, they will become lazy. They will be dragging their feet. What I'm talking about exists both in the secular sphere and even in the church. They are concerned only with self-aggrandizement and not the common good. It is this type of activity that is killing our society and the world as a whole today. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 4 says, I observed every activity done on earth and listened to my conclusion. All of it is pointless. Some other translation renders it vanity, like chasing after the wind. I hope we will be able to learn a lesson from what the world is going through presently. After you have amassed the wealth, you have cars that you cannot even ride in. You have all the money, there is no place even to spend. You have everything, and it is kind of useless. The point I'm making is we should channel our activities to glorifying God as we walk daily.
to extend his love to others as his workmanship. This will mean desisting from untoward activities that trouble God's creation and slows down its advancement and attainment of bliss. Doing everything, everywhere, and at all times to build others up and for the general good as did our sister, Dr. Mrs. Frances Ajose. John chapter 6 verse 27, Jesus Christ says, Don't work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life. Yes, there is eternal life. Living goes beyond here. She toiled. She labored. But she has laid down the sword now. But to us, she's dead. But to God, she's alive. She's facing our creator now. And something will happen. In the hereafter, we shall all render an account of everything that we have done, of all our earthly activities, our stewardship to our creator. Let me read from Revelation chapter 20, verse 11, following. It said, Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. And I saw the dead, great and small, poor and rich, beautiful and ugly, standing before the throne, and books were opened. But another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according, underline it, according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Meaning, there is a journal in the presence of God Almighty keeping records of your daily activities and the books shall be opened on that last day and it's okay, yes. What is you, you are so so so? Uh, locate him on page so so so. You were born on so 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 day. You died on so 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 day. You did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. Because of your activities, something happened in so 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 society, something happened in so 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 country. And you say, guilty or not guilty. You yourself, you will know that you are guilty. And the, sin, the judgment will be passed. The content of the book will determine our eternal destinies. Whether it will be in bliss or in torment. I pray we shall not be condemned in the mighty name of Jesus. This service is another opportunity. For us all to re-examine our lives, to have a rethink, and to be devoted to godly activities. And I want to call on you, if your activities either to add chorus purposes to God's everlasting agenda, and you seek for a change, you can come to Jesus today for a recreation. It is only in Jesus Christ that you can be recreated. A natural man cannot do anything good. It is when you come to Christ that the creation will happen and you will be able to be devoted to godly activities. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, Apostle Paul says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus, our whole self has been crucified so that the body of sin might be done away with that we should no longer be slaves to sin. And so I urge you, dearly beloved, on this occasion of this farewell service for our dear sister, with the words of Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6 verse 13, do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness to perpetrate 
wicked activities but rather offer yourselves to God as instruments of righteousness doing good works I pray that the grace to do this God Almighty will grant unto us and when death shall come to us we shall all see Jesus before we see that in the mighty name of Jesus once again condolences God Almighty will stand by you in the name of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit Amen death and victory over sin has opened the gate of heaven of his people. Let us pray that the soul of our sister, Frances Ulua Fumilayo Abisola, may come to her true home in heaven and that God may time reunite 
us all there. Let us pray for all the people of God that all who are baptized may die to sin and rise to a new and eternal life. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all who mourn the loss of their dear one, that they may be comforted in their bereavement. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all the faithful departed, that they may reign in the joys of heaven with Christ and the saints. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our departed sister, Frances Olua Fumlayo Abisola, that she may receive the fullness of life which she first received in baptism and enjoy the company of the saints forever. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all here present that God may one day reunite us all in the kingdom of his glory. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, our refuge and hope, we implore your mercy. Come to the aid of our beloved Frances Oluwafumlayo Abisola, that she may be delivered from her sins. May your pardon obtain for her to live in eternal fellowship with thee, in whom she trusted, believed, and served. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Seeing we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith and make our confession to our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbors in thought, one word, and deed. Through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have not sufficiently walked according to the mind of Christ. We have named the name of Christ, but have not departed from iniquity. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. We are the body of Christ. By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We offer thee, O Lord, this sacrifice of prayer and praise. Do thou receive it for the soul whose memory we this day recall. Make her, O Lord, to pass from death unto life.
us, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For He is your living Word. Through Him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. And now we give you thanks because through him you have given us the hope of a glorious resurrection so that although death comes to us all, yet we rejoice in the promise of eternal life. For to your faithful people, life is changed, not taken away. And when our mortal flesh is laid aside, an everlasting dwelling place is made ready for us in heaven. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Please name. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, this gift of bread and wine may be to us his body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the blood and gave you thanks. He took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it, a remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his suffering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice. Accept through him our great high priest. These are sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and we break this bread 
to share in the body of Christ. O Lamb of God, that that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Let light perpetual shine upon them, O Lord, with thy saints forevermore, for thou art gracious. Therefore, draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
please be upstanding as we sing that song. Grant, we beseech thee, Almighty God, that the soul of thy handmaiden, Frances Oluwafumlayo Abisola, which hath passed from this world, being cleansed by these sacrifices and delivered from sin, may obtain thy pardon and everlasting rest through Jesus Christ our Lord. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and walk to your praise and glory. Amen. Please sit back. I now invite Ronchi Yimoyan to give a song tribute. my 
my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross as Jesus died the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then a bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again, and as he with the precious blood of Christ. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of life's first cry to final breath Jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no schemes of man can never block me from his hand till he calls me home here in the power of Christ I stand no power of hell no schemes of man can never block me from his hand till he returns oh come me home here in the power of Christ I stand. Thank you. May God bless you more. The Lord be with you. Once again, it is my pleasure to welcome you all uh, to this service. Uh, those who are here and those who are watching online, I pray that the consolation of the Holy Spirit will be for each and every one of us at this time 
in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to thank God for the life and times of our departed sister, uh, for a job well done. And I know that in the presence of God, she will receive a well done and a welcome in Jesus' name. I offer our condolences to the family, the children, the grandchildren, home and abroad. God will uphold you. He will wipe away your tears and grant you the fortitude, Christian fortitude, to bear this irreparable loss. Not only the family, even the societies and organizations to which our sister belonged while she was there. Immediately after now, we make our way to the Vaults and Gardens Cemetery for the interment. Uh, the clergy will lead the body out of the cathedral. Uh, but before that, I want to recognize the presence of our brothers who are here to say farewell to our sister, the Venerable Festus Oluwo Shile from AVMCC Ikeja. He is representing the bishop of the diocese, the dean, and the entire members of the congregation of Archbishop Vining Memorial Cathedral Church Ikeja. You are welcome. God will bless you and thank you in a special way for coming to join us here today. Also with us is Reverend Bola Joko Oshinukwebi, a member of the family. God Almighty, we comfort you and renew your strength in his service. I also want to thank one of our sisters, Mrs. Oni. Thank you for joining. God will renew your strength by the day. The master of the music, you are also recognized. Thank you. It has been a very busy period for you. Uh, despite this lockdown and the situation around us, you have been forthright in doing the, serv the service of the Lord. God, we bless you for coming. As, as we take the withdraw him, the clergy will lead, the body will follow the clergy, and members of the immediate family will follow the body out of the cathedral. It will always be well with all of us in Jesus' name. Thank you.